afternoon. This is your News for Now update. I'm Kay Ingram. And if you haven't noticed, it's a pretty, pretty hazy day out there. And it's all because of wildfires to our north. The air quality is so poor, it's signaling alerts across our area. So let's get to Storm Team 4's Dave Price with more. All right, Kay, let's take a look at things right now. Uh, you can see there is plenty of haze out there, and this is going to be the story over the next several days, not simply hours. Uh, air quality is significantly impacted. It is unhealthy around much of the area, and certainly it is something to watch for those who are elderly, those with respiratory challenges, and the general population when the smoke is this uh, condensed and significant around the tri-state area. Low pressure spinning it from Nova Scotia right into our region and it's going to stay today tomorrow into Thursday and Friday as well. Now we are going to remain in the 70s for much of the week and keep in mind we could see some thunder showers popping today. We warm up just in time for the weekend and as we head into next week we are going to see some showers potentially back in the forecast right now 73 degrees as we head through the next several days we are going to cool down just a touch warm up for the weekend and then we'll see some rain as we begin next week. So thunder showers for today and watch the air quality, okay? All right, good to know. Thanks, Dave. We're staying on top of breaking news today, a golf merger that's sending shockwaves through the sports world. The PGA Tour agreed to merge with its Saudi-backed rival, Live Golf. The deal would end all pending lawsuits between the two competitors. Here's News 4's Bruce Beck. The standoff between the best golfers in the world is finally over. The PGA Tour, the European Tour, and the Breakaway Live Tour have reached an agreement to unify the game of golf. In a press release, the landmark agreement puts an end to two years of disruption and distraction. Yes, two years ago, the Saudi-backed Live Tour poached many of the world's best golfers, including Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, and Brooks Kepka, whose win at last month's PGA Championship legitimized the Renegade Tour. The agreement puts an end to any and all pending litigation and allows any golfer to apply for reinstatement to the PGA Tour following the conclusion of the 2023 golf calendar. The move will have plenty of critics for sure, including those on the PGA Tour. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, otherwise known as PIF, will make a capital investment into the new entity to facilitate the growth of the new venture. PIF has been roundly criticized as nothing more than a form of sports washing to help repair Saudi Arabia's image surrounding their track record on human rights violations. It's sure to be an uneasy alliance at first, but we'll get a glimmer of what it might become next week at the U.S. Open at L.A. Country Club. In Florham Park, I'm Bruce Beck. All right, big news. Thanks for that, Bruce. Too many people are stopped and frisked and searched unlawfully by NYPD officers. That's according to a court-appointed federal monitor. Now, last year, the NYPD deployed neighborhood safety teams to 34 high-crime areas to fight gun violence. Monitor Mylan Denner-Stein says those special units were engaging in, quote, unconstitutional policing, stopping 97% of black or Hispanic people without justification. Now, in one precinct, Dennerstein found only 41% of stops, 32% of frisks, and 26% of searches were lawful. A spokesperson for Mayor Adams said, quote, any unconstitutional stop is unacceptable, and we will strive to do better for New Yorkers every day. The lawyer for Congressman George Santos wants to keep secret the names of the people who co-signed his $500,000 bond. The Long Island Republican was released on bond after pleading not guilty to a 13-count federal indictment last month. But his lawyer says Santos would rather go to jail than have the names of his bond signers made public. He says identifying them would put their safety and well-being at risk. Polls are now open across New Jersey for today's primary election. 120 seats in the state legislature are up for grabs, with the winners going on to the general election in November. Now, this is New Jersey's first election using the new legislative map based on the results of the 2020 census, which moved some lawmakers into different districts. Voters have until 8 o'clock tonight to cast their ballot. Well, that's it for now. I'm Kay Ingram.